Alrighty, welcome to another episode of the Team Member Perspective Podcast Show. We've got a real treat for you guys today. For those of you that know um, and are in the Team Member Perspective group where we meet every Friday, you already know Riley, okay? And so get excited about it. Riley makes things happen at a high level. If you're not in our group, um, I want to give a little background with Riley, um, and then we're going to get into some questions with him. So, Riley, how long have you been in the insurance space with me now? So, I've been with you just over two years now, uh, two years and two months, and then I was doing some insurance before that for about six months, so almost three years in the industry. Okay. He's got, he's got a little experience under his belt, which is great. We're going to kind of talk through that a little. But guys, Riley, the, the coolest thing that I've seen is Riley is a high producer. He's a top producer. Um, he's motivated every single day. He's making it happen. Um, so I'm excited to learn from him today. Um, and I know that there are things that you can take away from him that you can apply with what you're doing to get to that next level. So Riley and I actually went to high school together. Um, Riley's a few years younger than me, like two, two. I think we're right around two. Yeah. Um, yep, two but years. we played baseball a, a little bit together. Didn't really know Riley a whole lot, but I know we did We did play baseball. So um, that's kind of where I met Riley. After high school, we kind of went our separate ways. Riley actually played college basketball. Not everyone gets to do that, Riley, right? And so I want to know... You know, what was your biggest takeaway from playing college basketball that you've taken with you into insurance or into your career? Yeah, no, that's a great question. College basketball was always a big dream I had growing up. I always wanted to play college basketball. I always wanted to make it to the NBA, right, as a young kid. But so I think it was really, really big for me to get to that level, um, especially where I was. I was a little bit of a skinnier kid didn't have a ton of muscle. A lot of people didn't think I would make it that far, right? So it was really cool to be able to prove those people wrong. I went and played, uh, started both years at Snow College, um, did what was really successful, captain on the team um, for both years. And so I think, let's see here, I think the biggest thing I took, I'd took i take away from being uh, at that level in terms of athletic sports is just the leadership aspect, learning how to work hard, learning that every single day you got to just show up and do the work because otherwise it's, it's, it's really what we talk about in the team member perspective all the time. It's taking massive action. Right. And I think that that's what I, I take away from it the most beautiful, simple as that. Oh, I love it. And, and, you know, I think some people look for the silver bullet in life or maybe even in sports of like, how can I just be the best. And I think the answer 90% of the time is you just need to take massive action, right? I think that's awesome. I think that's great. After college basketball, I guess talk walk us through what you what you did after that. Yep, so I played at a, a Snow College, so it's a two-year school, kind of a school to get you ready to go to a Division 1 school. And coming out of of Snow, I had a couple of offers to go play, but uh I ended up, uh, I met, met my wife at Snow College and uh, eventually just decided I, I, was, I was ready to be done with basketball, settle down, um, start making some money because at the time there wasn't the, the NIL deals that they have nowadays and stuff like that. So it was tough. It was like a full-time job where you don't make any money, right? So it took a lot of time and, and energy and um, sometimes I regret it not, not continuing my my basketball career, but for the most part, I think I made a good decision getting into sales. So that was kind of what I did after that. So I had a lot of people approach me about doing summer sales, door to door sales. If you don't know what that is, basically knocking on random people's door, trying to sell them something. Right. And I don't know, Coulter, if you were a big skeptic of it or not, but at first I was a pretty big skeptic, like for a couple couple summers, I was like, nah, I mean, I, that, that's not for me. Just thought people were just out there scamming people. Right. But finally I, I met with a couple of my good friends from high school. They went out the year before and just killed it. Like they made tons of money and they were super trustworthy people that I knew really well. So I was like, 
all right, if these guys are doing it, I better give it a shot. So the next summer I went out to Virginia Beach uh, and I sold pest control. And I'd say that was the probably the best move I've made in my life in terms of career choices or life choices, really, because it taught me so much about like communication skills with random people. Like it's crazy. And then the just the amount of money there is to be made out there. Like it's it's just nuts. So I went out there for a summer uh, and then got married after that. So uh, made a ton of money doing that. It was awesome, but wanted to settle down. So I decided that from there on, I, I was like, sales is, sales is the move for me. So that's kind of how I transitioned into insurance. So I love it. And, and you know, my story is very similar. And like you, one of the best decision I was, decisions I've ever made because a couple things, and, and you've touched on these things, which I think is awesome. We have limiting beliefs around what type of money we can make in our lives, right? I know I did. Mm -hmm. And when I went out and committed to doing that, I started to make money. And I think it kind of shattered those beliefs about what's actually possible. Um, sounds like exactly what happened with you, right? And not to mention... I mean, we had to figure things out, right? We weren't getting a paid a salary. And so, you know, hard work had to be there. Like if you weren't going to work hard and you weren't going to go knock doors, you weren't going to make money, right? And so there was some skin in the game. And I think it kind of forced us to develop sales skills and develop, you know, communication skills with people and just learn how to sell, which I think has been very foundational for me, you know, and you um, with what we're doing now in insurance, right? So I think that's yeah. awesome. One thing I want to add, to that, sorry to interrupt you, but one thing I want to add to that is I think that uh, summer sales really taught me to how to commit to something, like really truly commit to something because I was newly engaged when I decided I was going to go out and left my wife here, right? I was just like, I'm going to go out I'm going to work as hard as I possibly can every single day for the summer, make as much money as I can, try and get us set up for to be able to buy a house, right? And I was able to do that because I committed to myself and to my wife. And I think that that has just elevated my life in terms of my career and sales and making money and everything, honestly, not even just not even just work related, just life related. It's elevated me to be able to commit to things that I want to do and knowing that I can do them if I commit to them. So that's great. So I want to ask you a question, Riley. So you talk about committing, yeah. right? Um, and I think I agree with you hundred percent. If specifically in, in, in the team member perspective or team members in the insurance space, if you will commit, you're going to get results. Right. Um, and, and so talk to me a little bit about committing, right? Like, you say commit, like I committed to that, but what was, what was the fuel? What was it that was keeping you going on the days that were tough um, to still go and work hard, even though you didn't want to? Yeah. What was that for you? Um, at the end of the day, I know it sounds cliche, but it, it's just really developing a why, right? Getting down to a deep, uh, deep why, why you're out there knocking door to door, why you're showing up to the office selling life insurance and trying to, to sell products to these people that, that they need. Right. And I think that that's the biggest thing is, is doing these, these things to get to your why. And me knowing my why helped me commit to, to that. And my why at that time during that summer was to be able to come home and provide for my family buy a house for my, for me and my wife to live in. So we had somewhere to live. Right. And we wanted to be in Logan. So I wanted to, I wanted to, that was my why at the time. And so I, I committed to that. And I think that if you break down and have a why for every single thing that you do and you commit to that, why, then there's no reason you can't accomplish it. Beautiful. I love it. I couldn't have said it better myself. And, you know, I think why's can change, right? It's not like, Oh, this motivates me for this reason and, and that's forever. No, I think that'll all, always change. So I think 
realizing, recognizing, like, what is it that gets me out of bed on the days that are tough, right? Yeah. What is it that's going to pull me in or push me to work hard? Um, I think understanding that, because it's going to be different for everyone. And I think if you were like me in the summer in doing these door to door sales, you know, money motivates you just for a while, right? Because you get to a point where you've made a lot of money, right? And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, money can only, only motivate me so much, right? Mm -hmm. So I think what Riley's saying here is so fundamental, so foundational. And guys, success leaves clues. And in my experience with people that are doing things at a high level in their careers, they know and they're very clear with their why, right? Because you know, in the door-to-door -door space, you start to sell, you're going to make a lot of money. You're going to get to a point where money doesn't motivate you anymore like it did, right? Because you've got enough. And so now you got to decide what is it about money that motivates me? Why do I want money, right? And then here, you know, Riley wanted to buy a house, right? That's a big deal. Well, even go further. Why do you want to buy a house, right? And so I think what Riley's saying, it's so foundational, it's so fundamental that if you do not know and you're not clear with what it is that will motivate you, what your why is, figure that out, right? Um, get to the heart of what it is that motivates you um, and that will push you and it will pull you honestly to work hard and be consistent um, with your action every single day. So I love that. Love that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and okay, so you you got into I the never, summer sales space. Never, um, be, like me, uh, you know, it kind of shatters those like beliefs about what's possible with money door -to -door in, sales in a career. Like summer, you know. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Sorry, kind of cut good. off there. They'll, they'll edit this um, too. So we're you're good. Okay, cool. I was just saying, I never thought of myself as someone that would like plug, almost like plug door to door sales. But here I am, right? And I would honestly. I would recommend it to anyone like growing up when my kids get to that age, if they don't have anything else going on in the summer, I'm going to be like, dude, you will learn so much doing that. And even though every single day you're going to wake up with a pit in your stomach, you're going to look at your, your iPad and it's going to say zero sales, right? The worst feeling in the world, but the, the learning to overcome that feeling and that, fear every morning of going out there and not doing anything, working 12 hours, walking 30,000 steps and not selling anything, overcoming that fear and that feeling, I think has, it's just been tremendously beneficial for me. And I, I would recommend it to anyone. So. Dude, I, I I'm right there with you, man. Like it's, that yeah. truly was one of the best things I could have ever done at the time. It sucked. Right. You wake up yeah. and that pit in the stomach, that'll, oh boy, that's tough. I don't, I don't love going back there, but what did it do? Well, it, it, it got us out of bed. It got us knocking doors and it, even though we were dealing with rejection, right? We were getting doors slammed in our face. We had to learn how yeah. to deal with rejection. And then we had to yeah. learn how to overcome objections so we could help sell, sell something, right? Um, so we can make some money. So it taught me so much more than just sell skills, but how to deal with rejection and how to just consistently take action every day, even though you don't want to. I think it's so great. So yeah. guys, Riley sure. um, has, has been in the team member uh, or he's been in the insurance space for two and a half years or so. I can't remember what you said, um, sure. but yeah. I've been doing this for six, right? So I've, I've been around for a while and I remember when Riley started and I knew I knew that he was going to give me a run for my money. He was going to give me a lot of competition, mm -hmm. which, I mean, he, he's crushing it, right? So his second year, was it your, last year was, was your second year, 2022, right? It was my first was, full year. First full year. So the first full year of this guy's insurance career, he writes over 100 life insurance apps. That is a big deal, okay? And so... He's made, he's making it happen in the insurance space. And like me, there's a lot of things that he learned in the door to door space that honestly is, has allowed him to have that production and be consistent right now. Riley says, I recommend everyone do that. Now we've got a lot of team members listening in here that are in the insurance space and, and are kind of, you know, working on their careers in insurance. Now, maybe 
you know, they're not going to have that opportunity. But that's why we have the team member perspective, right? Riley is one of our coaches in the team member perspective. And so every single Friday, we're meeting as a group and we're talking about sales skills. We're talking about sales processes. So we can help you, you know, get your insurance production to the next level, right? A hundred, over a hundred life apps the first year in business, that's unheard of, right? Riley's making it happen. He's making it ha happen consistently. And so even though you didn't get the opportunity to go and, and have a door-to-door -door sales job, the team member perspective is where we're going to teach you those things. We're going to teach you fundamental foundational skills, whether it's mindset, sales skills, or any commu you know personal communication skills, whatever it is, we focus on those things. We focus on getting better. Um, and so, you know, that's the whole purpose of that, right? So I kind of want to talk a little bit about that program because Riley is one of our coaches. Um, Riley, you know, talk to me a little about, we just finally implemented and, and we're getting better at our leaderboard within the group. Um, but talk to me about how friendly competition and having that leaderboard with your peers has helped you sell more. Yeah, so um, when we first started, or when I first started with State Farm, we we joined the Team Member Hall of Fame, right? And that's kind of the idea that we're trying to create very similarly is is create a friendly competition, a leaderboard that that motivates other team members to to get to the top of the leaderboard, right? Everybody wants to see their name at the top of that leaderboard. And sitting next to Coulter in the office every single day has been probably probably the best thing for me at State Farm. And I I think that having that friendly competition every single day and pushing yourself to be better than the person next to you or the person ahead of you on the list, it's it's huge. And I think that yeah, I don't know. I think I think that if you can just just have an open mind with the team member perspective, listen to what we're talking about because we're doing it every single day and we're doing it right next to each other. But guess what? Everything we do is going to be just a little bit different, right? So having an open mind and being willing to try it try it my way, try it Coulter's way, try it whoever we bring on to the to the show's way. And just having, I think that's the biggest thing is having an open mind and being willing to try new sales strategies, processes, um, and stuff like that. I think that's going to get you to the top of that leaderboard, right? The people that don't have an open mind that aren't willing to try it, those are the ones that aren't going to see the success. So Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, I think we're quick to be critics, right? We're quick to say, oh, that's not going to work for me. But guys, if it works for other team members, it's going to work for you, right? And, you know, going off of that friendly competition, um, Riley pushes me to be better, right? I show up to work, I hear him having conversations, writing policies. I'm not going to talk to him until I write a policy so I can keep up with it, right? Um, and I think that is what, you know, a rising tide will lift all boats, right? Riley being in the office has elevated my production. There is no doubt in my mind allowed me to be more consistent and to show up every single day with every customer and every opportunity. That friendly competition is something that you can use to your advantage, right? Let it motivate you. Let it push you to be 1% better, to write one more policy, right? And that's what we're creating within the team member perspective is you're not, you're going to be able to see how you're matching up with other team members across the country, right? It's going to push you to be better. You will be better, right? And then the cool thing is we're going to learn from people that are making it happen at a high level, right? So we can learn from each other, all write more policies, make more money, and have a bigger impact, right? So it's huge. And that's what we're creating. Um, and it's getting better and better and better. And we're super excited about it, okay? So um, let it motivate you. If you're not part of our group, come give us a shot, right? Let us know, message us because we're getting results and we're getting them at a high level. And the cool thing about it is we're all team members, right? So you can relate. We're going to teach you exactly how we're doing it. You're going to learn from other people um, so you can write more and be more consistent and, and shatter that, that wall that you're hitting, right? And get past and start writing more policies.
Okay. I've seen it with myself. I've seen it with Riley and other team members within the program. So check us out. It really truly does work. And we're very confident in that. So, okay. So Riley, to wrap this up, dude, thank you for showing up. Riley's going to be on more of these podcasts. Um, and we're going to kind of go through, um, different topics of, of selling, of communication, of mindset. We're going to, we're going to cover a lot. Um, but this is a great episode to introduce Riley. So, you know, um, what Riley's about and where he's coming from. Um, so, um, you can learn from him. Okay. So Riley, by the time that this gets released, we're going to be, um, it's May, we're in the middle of May. Um, and so we're finishing up our health promotion with the company. Um, but June 1st, we're going to have a life promotion. Okay. You wrote a hundred, over a hundred life apps, your first year doing this thing. And so it's June 1st. We're going to say you need to write 20 life apps in one month. How are you going to do it? That's a great question. And I think that it's very important to have a plan of action, right? Going into these promos or going into your new month. And for me, it's, it's honestly pretty simple. I'm going to, I'm going to run lists that, uh, that our office has. I'm going to run lists for, for youthful drivers. I'm going to run lists for people that have car loans. I'm going to run lists for people that don't have certain discounts, right? I'm going to use those lists as my, to my advantage. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try and find some low hanging fruit to kind of build some momentum, build some, some, uh, yeah, I guess just some momentum going into the rest of the month. Because what I've found is if I can sell a couple the first day or first couple days of the, of the week, the rest of my week is going to be amazing. Right. So I'm going to try and get some of those low hanging fruit at the beginning of the months, create some motivation and some momentum going forward so I can have a huge month. That's that's what I plan on doing. I love it, guys. I want to break that apart for you because there's so much value in there. OK, the snowball effect. Right. You get a little snowball. You get some momentum. It's big. It's getting bigger, bigger, bigger. All of a sudden you can't be stopped. Right. I think that momentum is is something that is so key to being a top producer, right? And once you understand it, you will utilize it to your advantage, right? So go for the low hanging fruit at the first of the month, first of the week, first of your day, right? Get some momentum going because what happens and, and why you're getting that momentum and why it works for you is because all of a sudden your confidence is building, right? And when your confidence is building, you're gonna recognize more opportunities. You're gonna act on more and you're gonna perform really, really well. So guys, do not sleep on that. That is a absolute freaking value bomb right there that you need to apply into what you do. Get momentum at the first of your day, first of your week, first of your month, find low hanging fruit, things that you can write, right? Because it will build that momentum and it will set you up for the rest of the day, week or month. So awesome. Okay. The second thing I want to point out and reiterate here with Riley is he has intention, right? He's being proactive, right? If it is June 1st and he needs to write 20 life apps, he just talked to us about his plan. He has a plan going into this thing. He has intention um, with different lists that he's running, right? He's being proactive um, instead of just relying on the phone to ring and pivoting off of those opportunities. He has a game plan, a plan of attack to make that happen, right? And you know, a lot of you are probably wondering like, well, how is he going to have those conversations, right? What's he going to say? He's got these lists. How is he going to do it? That's a great question. Come join the team member perspective and we will walk you through exactly how we do that consistently every single day, week and month to make sure we're hitting the company promos, but also we're staying consistent in our production in all lines. Okay. And that's what we do. That is the value of the team member perspective. Um, and it's, it's cool how it's evolved, um, to now, you know, we meet every single Friday, we've got an online library full of everything that we do as far as selling. But what we've changed is now we have game plans every single week of this is our intention this upcoming week, because we're in this promotion and Here's exactly how you're going to use this list to write policies, right? And so that intention is so huge. Um, and, you know, you know, Riley, you know, being a top producer, um, he's just, he just told us that, right? And so those are the things that have helped Riley 
be consistent in his production, but be a top producer, right? And so now with the team member perspective, we're teaching you exactly how to do that. So really, if you're an agent, you can plug your team in and you're going to have a game plan every single week of how we're going to hit the promotions, how we're going to write financial services. So you can take your agency where it wants to go. It truly is plug and play, which I think is phenomenal, right? But there is one thing that needs to happen. Action, massive action. And, and you know, we've learned that from Riley today. So. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Thanks for having me on, man. Yes, Riley, thank you. Um, guys, come check us out. Come hear how Riley's making it happen. Um, like I said, he is one of our coaches um, and he provides so much value every single week. Um, and I personally have learned so much. And like I said, a rising tide will lift all boats. Appreciate you guys. And we will catch you on the next episode.